welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. Write me if you want me to do any watch work. And please like. It helps my channel and it helps me get motivated to keep on going. So today I have an interesting watch here on the bench. And what I'm doing with this watch today is actually going to be remove the balance staff because i got to buy another balance staff for this. And I have to punch it out. But have a look at this watch. It's gorgeous. I took the back off it already. So I'm just going to turn it around here and just show the camera. Which camera? Which camera? Which camera? Here, that one there. So this is, as you can see, let's get a close up of this watch. Waltham. So it's a Waltham 845. Let me get my tweezers here for a second and have a look at this. So I... Uh, I think I asked the gentleman what the problem was and he didn't know, but I received this watch about a month ago and I saw immediately what the problem is. Look at the wiggly wobbly balance. So this balance staff pivots have been broken off, obviously one or two, we don't know yet. I'm hoping it's only one because if you're ordering a balance staff, you have to have the ability to measure the balance staff completely, which means measuring all dimensions and including the pivot sizes because you need to measure if the pivots are broken on the balance staff uh, both of them then it's almost impossible to measure the pivot size but if your pivots are broken on one side you can measure the other one and you can use a pivot gauge to measure that and that just simply sticking the the balance pivot that's not broken into the gauge and you can determine uh, what size pivot is probably a 0.11 or a 0.12 millimeter pivot um, anyway that's what you, you've got to do so i've got to disassemble this just a bit i'm just going to take the balance off it maybe i can take it off while the watch is still sitting here in the uh, in the case and then <clears throat> remove the uh, the actual hairspring and blah 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 do all that kind of crap so i likely will just remove the hairspring while it's in place here that way i don't have any thought of pulling it all up and damaging anything the easy part of this is actually i don't have to to uh, disassemble much or slide it out sideways because this watch has got a balance that goes straight down like the old vintage ones from the 1800s like the full face pocket watches so this is, is a full face pocket watch but it doesn't look like the old full face pocket watches. Anyway, 21 joule adjusted. I don't think it's railroad grade only because I don't think they had railroad grade watches when this thing was uh, was made, when this particular watch was made. So so I gotta get out the staking set. I gotta get out my balance uh, staff removing device, the BSRD. You gotta give everything an acronym. So get my balance staff removing device out and just punch that balance staff out and then I'm going to measure the balance staff all dimensions and uh, and then order it and there we go that's it for now let's get into the details actually a little bit more so here's the face of this beautiful old Waltham watch it's uh, 1 to 12 and then it has a 60 second counter on it which is kind of cool it's a typical Waltham face with a double sunk dial the only thing about this face is that there's some damage right here. So I have to ask the owner, do you want me to fill that in? Because I have a special type of enamel paint I can use to fill that in so you can't see it as well. Or we can just leave it leave it looking vintage, right? One or the other. So I'll ask him later. Uh, but I've got to get this balance apart so I can order that staff, put this away, and then start work when the staff comes in. One more slight note to the viewers out there. I got a chance to try on my cousin's Rolex. So he showed up from Switzerland. And a big shout out to my cousin, Alessandro. Alexandra, if you can correct me. Um, anyway, pretty cool dude. And he had a very nice uh, Rolex. He let me put it on and take a picture so I could get all my friends jealous. Anyway, so he came in from Switzerland. And we're in Switzerland. He told me it takes like three months to get a new Rolex if you're Swiss. But if you're not, you're in a lineup, probably for about 10 years. So there you go. So anyway, that's a very gorgeous watch here. Maybe I can show you a picture of it with me and the watch. All right, there's my ugly face. And there's the Rolex. It's a gorgeous Rolex. Zoom in on it, but you folks probably know what it is already. So there it is. I felt very proud to wear that. And thank you very much for allowing me to put this Rolex on and get a shot. What the heck? Alrighty, then I'm back. I am back. So the first thing I'm going to do, see if this can zoom in for me, is I'm going to loosen this very small screw that's right here. And that should 
allow me to drop the hairspring down, which will help me when I unscrew the balance cock. I can just lift that up and the balance will just be sitting there. So it's a, probably the safest way to do this. Um, there are likely other ways, but this is the safest way to do this. So let's just do that. I'm going to just arrange my camera just a bit here. I'm doing it live, whereas other people like the wristwatch revival guy would spend hours and hours producing his videos. I don't have the time. Anyway, but I can do a watch check for you here. So here we go. Let me just take this off here because this is absolutely a gorgeous watch. This is the Hamilton GMT. So have a look at this thing. This is a Hamilton GMT. Um, it's good for, I think, a 100 meters, which you wouldn't want to dive with this beautiful thing. Uh, it's got a couple of dials here, or a couple of crowns, actually. And if you look at this crown here on top, this sets the time. And this crown here just moves that bezel, the inner bezel around. I got it screwed in. They're both screw-in crowns, which is nice. And I can move this, which can allow me to have uh, additional GMT numbers here for that. That's the small GMT hand, that little one, little one with the dark arrow on it. And then the other hands are just regular hands. So you can do that and set your uh, more GMT stuff with this particular uh, watch. So it's a gorgeous watch. It's a Hamilton. It's got a nice see-through case back, a little bit dirty right now. I could clean that up, be a good boy and clean it up for you. Let's get that cleaned up really quickly here. See if I can get my wrist gum out of here. There, removal of wrist gum. There we go. There, that's a lot better, isn't it? So there we go. That's the Hamilton. It's a it's a 21 joule. You don't need more than that anyway. Uh, <clears throat> and um, it runs a 28.8, uh, water resistant. So the number on here is H32625. H32632650. So that's Swiss made sapphire crystal. Uh, the movement is a 2893 2. It's on the bottom here. Uh, let me see if I can point to it right there. So that's 2893 2. Let me turn that around in case you want to scribble that down. The dash 2, I believe, is the GMT part of this particular movement. All right, 2893 2. Sapphire, stainless steel. It says, what does it say? 20 bar. So 20 bar, what's that? I think it's 10 feet for bar, 200 feet, something like that. 10 feet per bar, 20 bar, you had a zero at 200 feet. So that's a 200 foot depth, not a not 100 meters. So 200 foot depth is pretty reasonable, but it does have screw down crowns. So if you, uh, it says 290 PSI. So it's giving actually the pressure, which is hopeless, I think. Uh, it's got a very nicely decorated rotor. Uh, there it is there. Let me swing that around. See if it swings around for me. Come on, swing around. There we go. And it's just a gorgeous watch. I got this. I gave it to myself as a gift. So is it the first today? Maybe it is. It is the first. First of September, so I need to wear this watch even more. And that is the right time. So there it is. Gorgeous, gorgeous watch. Sapphire crystal. Look at that thing. Pops. So it's clean case. It's a polished case, which can leave dents, but I wouldn't recommend wearing this watch for everyday use. It's got nice Hamilton H's for the crown. I should do a watch review on this rather than just throwing it in your face as I'm doing this. So, so that's what I'm wearing today. So that is the watch check. So let me get back here. Again, uh, I don't get a lot of views on my videos, which is a tragedy because the guys like uh, wristwatch revival and just one more watch they get a ton of views um, maybe I don't chat enough or something but some people love my channel because I do chatty McChatty pants I do talk a lot uh, other people say why are you talking so much so anyway when you're doing this um, you just have to be very careful as you're as you're bringing your screwdriver up to the movement that first of all you get the right blade Secondly, that you're not uh, at risk of actually um, slipping and going into the hairspring. That's the biggest uh, danger of actually removing this. So I got the wrong screwdriver, so go up one. Uh, you need to dress your screwdrivers. That's the term to use, and that ensures that the blades are flat and they're at the right angle. Because a, a pro improperly dressed screwdriver that's not absolutely flat will not sit into the screw uh, well enough. So there we go. So that's just turned. 
Now you really got to be careful because if you do this and you slip and that that um, your your blade goes into the into the uh, hairspring, then you've got other issues. You now have hairspring issues. I have to seal this uh, this crystal in better. It's just popped out, but that's not a difficult job. I've got a crystal press and I can use the crystal press to do that job. So now I've got this thing out um, or out. Um, I put a needle on a vise, you know, a grip, vise grip, which is really useful for different things. One of the things I find it useful for is getting the hairspring stud, just pushing it down from where it resides. So there it is there. So I can just push that down a bit, and I can see the hairspring is riding along the... Uh, yeah, there it is there. So I just pull that out a bit. Now, when I lift the bounce cock, if it's the hairspring is still caught up there, then I can very simply um, uh, just tap it so it goes down again. So, so I want to just remove this, uh, and I don't want to unnecessarily break the top pivot while I'm doing this. So again, I highly recommend buying the Bergeron uh, 7010. This is this is that stick I keep raving about, the Bergeron 7010. Polynamide, polymade, polymide, plastic, stick, very resistant. Watch it, resistant. So what I do with this is I just hold down on on the, the balance cock like this as I rotate this. But again, I've got the wrong screwdriver. Wrong screwdriver. You've got to get the right screwdriver for the job. Somebody told me that yesterday. Uh, I had some soffit issues in my house. And the gentleman said, right tool for the right job. I said, oh, you know, yeah, that's brilliant. I learned that in the army when I was removing gun parts. So get that screw out of the way. Like take it out and then remove it quickly. And let's see if I can just lift this up without worrying about the hairspring. Uh, the hairspring, yeah, there we go. So it's out. So there we go. That's the bounce, the bounce cock. So I'll put that aside. Um, I always have a tray available. So. And that, as they say in French, is tray good. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I am. They call those old man jokes, eh? So when you're <clears throat> when you're young and you tell a joke, it's a joke. You get older and you tell a joke, they say that's an old man joke. There is no difference between a joke you tell when you're young and a joke you tell when you're older. It's just that people see you as an older person, so they think that's an old man joke. In fact, it's not. There we go. That's nice. I have to actually, when I, I disassemble this, i got to examine all the jewels and the jewel settings and make sure that I don't have any problems. If I quickly look at this, I want to see if the top pivot, lower, yeah, both pivots are broken. Wonderful. Now i got to actually look at, let me just see if I can zoom in here a bit. There we go. Like that. So if you look at this here, you'll see the lower pivot is broken and the upper pivot is broken. So that's not good. It's two broken pivots, folks. That means I've got to measure the jewel hole uh, to, to get the right pivot size. So it's no other way of doing that. Um, it's also a double roller. You can see the roller on the bottom and a roller below. So now I've got to deal with the double roller when I'm taking this thing off. It should punch out the double roller without a problem, but I might want to do one roller and then the other roller so it's very touchy when you have a double roller and just just to let you know the bottom roller if you look at this again see the bottom roller on there it's hard to point to without moving my hand because I might lose focus here but the bottom roller which is this one right here uh, it's got a bit of a U like a half moon on the bottom and I'm trying to point to that right there is a half moon and that half moon is aligned with the actual uh, impulse jewel. And this presents or prevents actually the impulse jewel from once, it, once, the pallet, once the jewel enters the mouth of the pallet, pallet fork and it pushes out, it prevents that jewel from flipping back. So you won't, you get, it will only go right into the pallet fork because these two are aligned. And that's why that the double roller helps with uh, not having it's not called over banking, but I'd, I'd say that the pallet, the jewel being on the wrong side of the pallet fork. So that's what that is, and that's what the double roller is. So that's the, 
that's a quite a nice design. Uh, it's a little trickier because you can have that double roller, the second roller, the smaller one, come off, and then you buy a balance staff and it might not fit properly. But you can, you can actually take that. Uh, you can use a punch to actually uh, increase, or sorry, narrow down the uh, the width of that uh, of the second roller if you need to. I've done that before uh, when I was making the balance staff for one of these things. So, so that's that. So. Again, uh, being a good boy, I'm going to take this watch and just put it out of the way. To move this out of the way, out of the way. So now I've got two pieces of watchness sitting in my little tray. Uh, now the now the job, and then cover it. That way it doesn't get any dust on it. And now the job is actually just going to be uh, removing the hairspring. That's the next job I got to do. So let me fit that double roller nicely in there. Um, I might want to mark where the stud is on the hairspring. Now the reason for doing that is that when you put the hairspring back on, if this thing was perfectly uh, in beat, then you can put it back and you don't have to worry about uh, the beat error as much. So, but I, I will line it up uh, later on anyway, but I'll just put a, a slight mark here with a, with a marker and just get sort of the general orientation of that. And there we go. So I put a dot on that and just bring it up to the camera again. Hopefully again the focus will happen. There's the dot. And I can see the dot is just slightly off from the uh, hairspring, but I'll take note of that. But once I am reassembling the hairspring onto the new balance, um, I actually do make sure the whole thing is aligned perfectly. So the mouth of the, of the uh, pallet fork that's in between the two banking pins is is perfectly aligned with the shaft I'll, I'll say of the escapement so i want all that stuff to be nicely aligned and that way when there's no power on the mainspring the the impulse tool is sitting between the two banking springs so and that's that should give me almost perfect bead error so that's what i'm counting on so now i've got to remove the this hairspring i think i showed the technique for removing the hairspring before but you got to be very careful when you do this because you do not want to disrupt that hairspring. So I usually take two of my screwdrivers. I usually use a yellow and white, if you're familiar with the color codes um, on screwdrivers, and they're fundamentally color coded the same each time. So I use a yellow and white to do this. Now, as I'm doing this, I may need to shut up because you don't you want to be able to concentrate while you're doing this, so you don't screw it up. So there's the two. Yeah, and this is a, the the most simple way of doing it is like this. So you want to go underneath the hairspring with your screwdriver. And then you want to be able to go up, up and under like that. And I, I've got it twisted just a bit, so I'm not sure if this will work. But I want to put a little bit of pressure on that collet. And I'm using my smaller screwdriver to rotate it. And I'm always forces downward. That way, there's very little risk of the screwdriver going upward and marring the hairspring. So there you go. So I, when I did that, I'm pushing downward like this and then going inside and then just rotating that screwdriver ever so slightly. And if you do it that way, the hairspring will come right up. <clears throat> and then you don't have that issue. If you, the hairspring slips, it actually goes down and, and stays, or sorry, the, the screwdriver slips, it goes down and stays away from the hairspring. So there we go. That'll be cleaned, this hairspring, and demagnetized, so I don't have an issue there. I'll likely demagnetize that when it's reinstalled. So that's the hairspring. And now I've got the staff, the balance staff in the balance, and I've got the rollers I need to remove. Uh, I'm just going to quickly look at that balance and it looks, I think it's riveted. I don't know if it's friction fit, but I think it's riveted. So what I want to do now, the next thing to do is to remove the uh, the balance, the uh, the, the uh, roller tables. got to start speaking English more, I think. So I know this tool that I bought is for removing roller tables, and you pressure down on here with the balance. So I'm thinking I might try using this tool. It'll be, it would be the first time I've used it, but um, I'm going to try using it for the the small upper roller. So what I what I'll do here is I'll just open up 
the jaw here um, and then put that got to get up close again with my eyepiece here and put that in on top of this right so I'm just everything's very loose right now uh, and then when I squeeze that in I'll show you what the result is squeeze that in a bit I turn the wheel here until it's a little bit tight and they turned it the wrong way so let's call me wrong way Charlie here let me get that in there again it needs to be a bit wider so just turn the wheel again until it's wider slide that in I could put this on the uh, put this on the block which probably would be a lot easier and then I turn the wheel again keep turning it the wrong way so let's open it up open it up a bit more if I can get a closer close-up here let's see if I can do that all right this is the closer close-up see if this works I got a light on this camera so I should be able to turn that on too there we go now try to do this while I'm super close here all right hang on slide this in like this so now I slide this in push it in I'm paying big attention to that jewel, the impulse jewel. And I just want to shift it over just a bit with my finger, like that. Now I can use the top of this to turn it, turn it, but I can't remember. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? I think if I go counterclockwise, let me see which way it moves. It moves the wrong way. So there we go. Clockwise, righty tighty. So there we go. So that's in there now, as you can see. Just move that around here so I can. So there it is, squeezing it. Now I'm not sure. When I look at that and I look at the angle, if you look at the angle here between the. Um, if you look at this angle here, let's get that in here so I can show it to you. Uh, there we go, like that. That little angle there of this claw grabbing underneath that roller table right there. That one that worries me because now I'm putting pressure on the edges of that roller table and sure I might be able to lower this now to meet the actual pivot and then push up uh, but it's not a snap action right so I don't I kind of don't like the way that would work because it's putting all the force on the edge of the of the roller table which I don't trust that that won't split the roller table so I'm actually not going to use this tool um, and you can give me your advice if you have this tool already. This is not my watch. I'm doing watch work for another person. So I, I wouldn't take the risk on this. So what I do like is my Magic Roller Remover. I just love this tool. For bracelets, two 18 size. Same bracelets, but really it's pocket watches. So there it is. There's the claw. I've done a video on this before. So I can slide that under there. There's also another roller remover tool here that is not too bad because this roller removal tool actually has a flat base. If you look at those two edges, they're flat. So if I turn the screw here to push out that the top roller, that's going to be hitting the flat base that I can tighten on the side here. So that's one way of doing it using this tool here. And you can see there's some of these tools are on the internet. So uh, on, on eBay, so you could probably do that. Uh, this tool here is absolutely flat. I know it is and I know I can punch down straight down with it so I would remove both Both rollers with this but not at the same time. So I'm going to try to remove the top one first So I'll slide this the uh, balance into the slot here Again, uh, it's tough to do these videos while there's people there's people watching you So let me slide this into the slot somehow that ain't going to work. Uh, this way here. 
I got another tool that's used for removing rollers. It's a little bit more aggressive. I guess if you're doing it in a factory, that other tool I have is the best one to use. So this one here is, I can now slide the second roller into the slot, but I don't want the uh, impulse tool to be in the way. So how the heck am I going to do that? Maybe I punch them both at the same time. What do you think? What do you think? Advice asked for. Because if I do this, this the other way, then I'm going to have a big problem. So I think I'm going to do them both at the same time. So with this tool here, you just take the bigger, the bigger roller will push out the smaller roller. So I'm going to decrease the size of this thing, I think. Again, just trying to line everything up here. Like that. And I've got to tighten this now. And do it while you're on camera, buddy. Is that going to tighten? Is that tightening it or loosening it? I think that might be loosening it. Loosey goosey, tidy righty, or whatever. I'm not sure how that goes. There. So I want to hold the arm here while I'm tightening it. So I'm trying to remember which way to tighten it. So if I go this way, it should be tightening it. It looks like it did tighten it. Well, let me look at that. Yeah, there we go. It's right up against the bounce. So that's pretty good there. Again, I'm going to look close at my eyepiece. Make sure I've got that in there nicely. And now when I punch that, the roller table should come out. So I get my punch. Let me grab the punch. There's a couple of punches here that I have. Uh, some are smaller than others. There's this punch here, quite small. You just want to make sure that punch is going right over the the actual balance staff, right? That's pretty good right there. So you want to be able to knock that out. And so I want to make sure that that's tight enough, right? That I don't have an issue. That's pretty tight there. And I think that that punch is pretty much over the top. That should work. I have great fear of ruining the roller tables. That should work. So there we go there. And now if I tap that with a hammer, this roller table should both come out. If I screw it up, then I have to get a roller table and I have to figure all that out. But it makes me a bit nervous doing this punch work. You get my hammer out. I got a bronze hammer. And you want to make sure you tap that out nicely and not have to do it again. So let me see if I can tap this out under under camera duress. So if I just tap it. That's not coming out. I don't like that. Let me look at the roller table again. I'd love to get rid of the top one first. I would love to get rid of the top one first. Yeah, what you don't want to do is... Yeah, let me look at this. I might use my staking set. Just hang on. So I tapped it and it didn't seem to work. Um, it's just being picky, I think, maybe. But I don't like the results, so don't tap harder if you, uh, you know, you, you don't want to crack anything. So that's the tricky part, right? So I just want to have a look at this to make sure I don't have any additional issues, which I don't. So I want to get this roller table removed. So, so maybe I will try this Made in France tool to uh, to remove the the upper part right of the double roller so we have a look and see how this tool would fit and work this would slide underneath right here so i'd need to basically increase the uh, size of the gap here to put that over 
And then you're watching me fumble here, but I've never had problems removing a roller. This one seems to be in there nice and tight. So I want to make sure that I've, I'm paying attention to where the jewel is so I can tighten that a bit more. And then slide that in again. Nope, loosen it. Loosey goosey, tidy, tidy, righty, righty, loosey, whatever. Never remember that. Yeah, that's pretty tight there. And so I want that to be over the top. Where's the jewel? Just keep my stuff away from the jewel so I don't fart with the jewel. So that's that. I think I'm going to go to plan C now in a few seconds. But this goes over the top of that. Like that. Is that in there? That's in there like that. That's pretty good there. If you look at that, it's all in there nicely. Now the question is, if I turn this, is that going to push down and let me remove that roller table? That's just spreading the arms, so that's not working. Let me drop that down again. So that's two failures so far. Ugh. Let me look at this again here. Oh, I should just be able to tap that right out. I think I'll get the staking set up. Go for plan D. So before I bring up the staking set, I'm going to look at this particular device. So here I've got two tabs that are used to remove the roller stuff. So in this case here, if I want to remove the upper roller first, I would slide this in here if it's possible, like that. And that's in pretty tight right there. And then I would tap down with these particular stakes. So just put the stake over the top and tap down. So that's another way of doing this. Now, if I were worried about the pivot on the bottom, I would put some Rodico down there and that would just basically keep that pivot in place. But I'm not worried about the pivot on the bottom in this case. So I'm just going to try to tap this out. So let me look at this and see what kind of angle it looks like it's at. There we go. So that's in there now. and. Trying to move it up a bit, but let me just move the camera up a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So that's that. So now the question is, will that take the roller out? Try again. All right, perfect. So that, if you look at the result, that removed the upper safety roller, right, of this. So now I can, what is this? I've just found something here. Looks like a little disc. <laughs> Every time I find a piece of crap, I just move it off to the side. It's just a little piece of plastic or something from somewhere, some other job. So now I've got this small double roller. So now this looks like it came out perfectly. So you can see the shaft on that. So it's a double roller and it's got this shaft on it. So really, when I when I tap down on that, uh, there could have, that shaft could have let go, but it's all part of one, one machined uh, thing, so I'm not too concerned. So that's excellent. So let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to put that in here next to the hairspring, like that. And now let's get to the other one. So this this old device, factory made, tough as hell. This was. This is so far my best one, which is kind of crazy because the double roller, the other one was, should have worked without a problem. But I think that that having the shaft on the safety roller provides extra friction, which is no friggin' good. So now I'll bet if I tap this, it'll come out without a problem. I'll look down the base here to make sure I got co good coverage of that roller. I'll bet you now I could use my, my, my roller remover device. Because I like that. 
I think it's the safest one. So now that I've got the upper roller removed, let's get that. So I think that was the problem. When I squeezed down on that shaft um, with that other device, with my safe, with this particular magic roller remover, um, it squeezed on the shaft. Let me show you this because I think it's worth noting. So you've got, here's the, here's the roller here, the one I just removed, and it's got a, a, a basically a shaft like that and then the second roller is here like this like this and it's got a jewel that goes up like this right and it's sort of a line with this I'll just move this out a bit but the jewel goes up and through like this so when I grab that with the other device I I thought I was grabbing the shaft of the balance staff right but in fact I think, I think it went the other way but anyway in fact I was bet grabbing the shaft of the safety roller. So I, if I grab tight on the shaft of the safety roller, and then I pound down on this in this direction, like that, then this isn't going to want to move because it's got a grip on the shaft. And that's probably why the second roller didn't come off from the double roller. So that's why. So when I uh, did it the second way, um, it was loose, looser, I'll say, in this device right so it was allowing the uh, balance staff to go down while the roller just snapped up but this whole part of the roller all this stuff here came out it's one piece I just thought it was a second roller which is in other watches I think Elgin just has it like that not a roller with a tube so it makes the job a little bit tougher right so there's a education 101 on how that was done so now when I look at this particular when I look at this the, the second roller here and and I put that in my famous roller remover device the magic roller remover so I put that in there right like that Let's see if I can tighten this up just move it this way a bit and then tighten it up a bit I think I tighten it this way put my thumb on this on the edge here so that it actually does tighten I just push that push that because I'll just when I get close to it being ready, I just remove it and let it go down and grab a bit. And that's pretty good there. You'd love for it to grab underneath where the balance staff is when you're doing this because that provides the best position, but this is not too bad. The main point here is that you want, you want that roller here to be sitting flat against the device that you're using to remove the roller otherwise you're putting pressure on the edges of that roller which will which will bend it a bit and could crack it so it can't come off let me give you an example like if you've got a staking set which I have obviously have a staking set um, and you grab one of the stakes that could be used for removing a roller here's one of the stumps basically this is a stump and you probably could remove a size 18 roller with this stump and they've got a little a little groove in there for your impulse jewel if you're working on rollers and stuff it also used for punching stuff on but but that's flat so that's completely flat which is which supports the roller uh, completely when you're removing it that way you're not at risk of of bending the roller or cracking the roller because all these devices I've showed shown you work well like this made in France roller remover device it didn't work that well because it wanted to spread at the bottom here this base wanted to spread there's my guitar fingernails by the way and you folks that know me know I play guitar and that's why my fingernails are long and I'm sorry but that's the fact okay but this device anyway will spread which doesn't help actually help it when you're trying to remove a roller so pushing this slowly or turning this slowly which which pushes this device inward on onto the uh, balance staff was supposed to push the roller table out but it didn't do it so so anyway crappy device so this this device the other one the old one worked a lot better so now if i look at um, just t t getting rid of this this should work without a problem let's see if i can find a punch that makes me feel good just see how this punch fits on top here I just put it down like that and then just try to align it so I want that punch to be inside the hole 
even though in this case here the pivot is gone so it's not catching nicely so I'm going to grab another punch here I don't need a super small punch I just need one that fits you grab this one here it's got a hole on the end as you can see there's the hole and I want that to grab enough of the staff so there's there we go so that's perfect so if you look at that up close you can see that that punch is right over the staff so now when I pound down on it and I'll tighten this up just a bit right like that all right and that way it's in there good and as you can see it's nice and flat so that flat part is with the other flat part so now when I punch down that roller table should come out I want you all to put your hands together and start praying so I'm just going to hit this with my hammer straight down and there you go the roller table it came out perfectly so that was one quick little tap um, on this and this looks like this is kind of weird because this looks like it's copper or brass probably brass but this is the roller table now so when you can look at that roller table and see that there's no there's no marring or anything on that roller table that's perfect right there we go so that's a perfect roller table all ready for use later on let me move this out of the way so what we're going to do because we're angle retentive is we're going to put that in with the other roller there we go the jewel looks like an impulse jewel looks like it's in perfect condition and then the roller table the balance here it's just too much crap on my desk here i'm spilling things over so but nothing of consequence so here's the balance now. So I should be able to just lift this out. Uh, I could open this up a bit, right? That way it's easier. And then just find the groove and lift it out. And there it is there. That's the uh, magic roller remover. So that works really well. And if you look at your balance, once you've got your balance out, have a look at it. Make sure your balance is true to flat. It's true to flat. You don't have an issue because if you can't, you've you need to you can bend the balance with your fingers uh, the manual the watch preparers manual tells you how to do that if you've never done it it does work I've done it before they provide a tool actually to support grabbing the balance and bending it um, so I'm looking at this I'm looking at where the uh, the uh, screw the timing screws are it looks like in the very end here these would be your screws to slow or speed up the watch slow down or speed up the watch if I look at it from the other side, um, I can see that these screws on the edge here, these four screws here, have a lot of real estate. No, the end, the end ones are the ones used for uh, timing the watch. So if you needed to slow it down or speed it up. So now if I look at that, the balance really closely, I'm just doing a close up here for you guys. It looks like it's riveted, but it doesn't matter because I've got a great tool to remove the balance. So let's do that and remove the balance staff from the balance. So here's the tool I used to do this job. Um, I think I had this in the last, the previous video, but there's two stakes and they've got holes in, on the end of the stakes, which are nice to have, um, and they're punches, right? So they're used to punch out the balance. And then there's these two, and this is for my friends out there, two jobby do hickeys, right? And they're just different sizes. So that's all. The last time I did this, I used this jobby do hickey. And they're used to press the balance against the um, the actual thingamajabi doohickey. There, is that good? So what I want to do here is I want to find take the balance. Uh, let me see. Can you guys still hear me? I think so. So I want to loosen this up. So let's just back this up a little bit so you can see again what I'm doing. So the evil watchmaster, right? So. What I want to do is find the right hole for this balance. So it's always hunting for holes. And you want that to be flat, right? And you're going to punch the balance down out. And if riveted, not a problem. So there's what the balance kind of looks like, right? And get a backing here so you can see it. There's what the balance looks like. So I want to put this down into a hole to make sure that it's flat. So, so this one is flat, but if I can make it smaller I do that so I take it uh, that one's good move it over one is this one good yeah no it's not you see how it's rocking you don't want that you want it loose enough you want it like that there's a little bit of play there but that's fine so you want it like that and now I want to snug this in so I'm going to use this tool here 
and I put that inside like this. I don't know what these tools are called, but this one might be too, is that too big or too small? So I just can use this one then, see if this one fits. It's pretty tight. If I can get it over the top, I will, and then just do this. So, so now the balance is in place and this tool is on top of it. Now, the tool has a two windows and you look through those windows to make sure your balance is through. And the trick here about this tool here is to tighten everything down so it snugs the balance down again so when you punch that the, the staff through it, it doesn't basically bend right so so the first thing I want that's my setup right here so I'm going to take this apart again so just loosen that like that and go at the side right and then I'm going to that's the hole it needs to be in so now I've got a centering stake and I'm just going to center that up right so I want to make sure I get the right one because you can do this job and not have the right one. So I'll put it over the top, tighten it just a bit, pull the balance out. Um, and, and what I do is I just then loosen the loosen this and push down, right? And that's centered and then tighten it nicely. And then when I put the balance back, so I know it's in the right place, I just do that. And then I know that's the right place and push your centering stake down and yes it is the right it is the right hole because you don't want to do the wrong hole here okay so now that's centered and you tighten that up and now I can take my my device I can't remember what these are called but my jobby doohickey here which, which has its little window for viewing it's got a viewing window it's flat on the end here so that allows me see if I can again use my hand to I'll help the focus that allows you to just punch the balance out with well, the edges are are protecting the balance right so the balance arms so you don't want those arms to bend so you just slide that in again and now I want to expand that up like this and that's expanded like that right and then check five times now I want to take a punch and I can probably use this punch here I'm just looking at the different punches and seeing what they're what condition they're in but I can use this punch here and you go down don't tighten everything up yet you just go down with the punch go down it'll it'll find its way through this device right see if I can do that there we go I find its way through this device and then you look inside the 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 window here and I can't see it in the window yet so I'll just push down and move and wiggle and do stuff like that so I just loosen that up just a bit move it around is that going to get through yes no maybe pull it up a bit push it down a bit so this doesn't seem to want to go through for some reason it's all about angles folks it's all about angles let me see i might use the other punch maybe this one's got a, a bend in it on the end and i'll do the exact same thing with the other punch go through go through go through and then look in the hole and that punch goes right through no problem so now I want to look in that hole to make sure that that punch is lines but I can tighten this up now right and I want to tighten that up against the balance I think that's good right there and I tighten that up against the balance because now this goes all the way through and I want that tight that's pressing on the arms of the balance like that now you don't have to tighten it so hell has frozen over so that's this is what it looks like like that and then if you look in the hole you can see that the punch is right up against the uh, the balance so I'll move that over a bit and try to tilt it a bit there we go and so that's good so now all I should have to do is tap down so and if I tap down that balance should come out There we go. So I just tap down. Now I can pull this up a bit. Loosen this while I'm pulling it up. So that's loose now. Um, and then pull out the, the stake out of the top. Right? And then what's happening here is that the balance staff probably fell through, which it, it does. 
But if you look at the balance, it's in perfect condition and it's not bent or anything. It's still flat as heck. And if you do that without a tool like this, then the chances are it, it could get ruined. Now what I do now is look in, the, look in the bottom of the staking set, right? And guess what? The balance is right there. It fell right through. And it's going to grab this while on camera. That's another question, right? So i got to turn it this way a bit. So it's right here on the side and I'm just, the camera angle is shitty here so I'm just going to try to grab it without looking too much. There we go. So there it is. Let me move all this out of the way. And there's the, ba there's the guilty balance. So what I'm going to do now with that balance, I did this in a previous video so I'm not going to bother doing it here, but I'm going to measure the, the widths of all of the various shafts on this balance. I'm going to measure the overall length of the balance. I'm going to assume the pivot length and I measure it from pivot to pivot even though both pivots are broken off. Um, and then I'm going to provide the vendor with the actual uh, serial number of the watch because he'll be able to look up the balance required and sometimes they have different pivot sizes. And then I'm going to measure the, the, the jewel hole uh, that'll give me this, the balance size. It's probably a 0.11 I'm thinking but I'll measure that jewel hole to make sure I'm right um, and the easiest way to measure the jewel hole is to measure it from the, uh, the, the upper balance staff. So hang on, let me just, just while you're on camera here, there's the balance. And you can see that balance is in perfect shape. Uh, there's a little piece of cornflake on it there. <laughs> but the balance riveted on, this device made sure I could remove that balance completely without, without you know, ruining the integrity of the balance, the arms and the balance themselves. So I'm going to back out a bit here. And real-time camera action, just like CSI, right? And I'm going to put all my stuff away and then come right back for a second. Just a quick note for this tool here. A gentleman actually sent me one of these because he wanted to make for me to make him a, a punch. So I had to do this, drill a hole through the end, make the punch so it fit through and everything because he didn't have any punches and he begged me to do that so I got a I got a stake from a staking set that I have I got like spare stakes and I made one of these for him and tested it on my own it worked perfectly so he was really grateful because you couldn't find one now of course being a watch dude I have to make sure I take this balance and get it out of the way right that way I'm not going to ruin anything so now that's in the tray uh, and I've got my balance right here and I just have to measure that balance now and get the data that I need. So for measuring the balance I use a micrometer and the micrometer is it's I, I can't find the, the back jobby doohickey for the micrometer but I just dropped the battery on the floor uh, that's where batteries belong but the battery just seems to stay in place when I throw it in and push it down with a uh, with tweezers so batteries like that I know somewhere on the, my in within my watch repair area there is a cover for this micrometer I don't know where it is but there is so I've got this very nice little stand I picked up at Cardon Tools C-A-R-D-O-N Tools they're online highly recommended and this goes down to 0 0.001 millimeters which is what you want you want something that's very precise so now I can squeeze this micrometer into the uh, into this little stand. The stand weighs a ton, by the way. Now, I don't know sure how much a ton is, but it weighs a ton. I got to get rid of my hammer. So now before I do any measuring of this balance, what I'm going to do is sketch it out so that when the uh, vendor sees the sketch, he knows exactly what this thing looks like. So, so I've got the one shaft here like that. I'll do this like this one shaft and then of course there's going to be the pivot on the end right and that goes to this part of the balance and that slopes upward like this and downward like that and then it does that right and then there's the part where the balance itself sits so there's the this part here where the balance itself sits so I'm going to do this like this and this like this and then there's the shaft going outward like that and that's going to have the roller table the, the, the double roller and the roller table 
and then this goes down like this and it goes out to this and then down to the pivot and then down out down and then out to the pivot so that's what the balance looks like so if I take that right let's just push this balance off of here I want this dimension I want these are dimensions I really need this dimension I want I'll just put it here this dimension and I could measure this here but it's not really necessary I want these dimensions and then I want from here to here right and I don't know if he needs any more than that right so I think we're good there with these dimensions uh, so I want this dimension here right so that's what I'm, I'm just going to put the notes here and I'm going to take a picture of this and send him the name of this so the serial number of the watch I can just put that down in here right now right now Jerry so I just turn the watch movement around a bit and look at that it's 21 joules it's an 845 an 845 and there's a serial number on the edge so if I look at this watch I've got the data right there there's a serial number on the left hand side so it's 15039264. Now I'm going to look at that and verify that I got the right number, right? Let me see. 150. 39264 and I'll look that up in the database and so that's the SN right and then it's a Waltham Waltham 845 845 so I've got this information now on the card so when I send it to him so that's kind of what it looks like and now I know that he knows what watch this is so and it's a waltham pocket watch uh five positions all one or all stuff so i'm going to look that up after but first i'm going to do the measurements of all this with my famous micrometer so i'm not going to show the measuring of all this because it'll just bore the hell out of you but what i'll do is squeeze this thing into the micrometer and up here and then do all the measurements of this balance staff in the micrometer and i'll get right back to you so I've got all the measurements now, uh, but my problem is the old pivot is stuck inside of the uh, of the balance cock. So I can't. I got to take that out because I have no other way of measuring that pivot size but looking at the jewel hole size. So I need to remove the balance, um, the actual, the upper. Probably not have to remove the jewel, but at least the cap jewel. I need to remove that out of there which means I need to push that push that out. So when you're taking that out, you've got to make sure that the um, you're clear of the regulator arms, right? So you're not you're not of any chance of screwing up the regulator arms. So I'm looking at this and it looks like it has two different screw sizes. Looks like someone's replaced this screw with a different one and the other one if you look at the two screw sizes, one of them is bigger than the other. So this has had some work done on it. So that's in the past. So I, I will, I think I'll take a picture of that so I know which screw goes into which hole. Because I likely won't need to put this back together again, but I just want to see what screw goes into which hole. So let me zoom in here and take a quick photo of this thing. There we go. And now I can just very carefully make sure the regular pins are clear well, I remove the uh, the cap jewel on here. So let me just turn that around and make sure my jewel, my screwdriver aren't slipping very much because they tend to be slipping right now. There's one screw like that. I'll just put that in here so I know where things go together. Now I'm not sure if this is the right size screwdriver for this one yet. Just make sure my 
again my regulator pins are clear of all that stuff so and I should be able to just push that setting out if it's a good day I can dump this because it looks looks loose there we go and there is a setting sitting in there it's a sitting setting and with any luck I could just push that out it doesn't look like yeah because I got the cap jewel on top and then the other jewels and I want to just be able to push that out uh, so just get a piece a flat end of the Rodico can I do that let me see got a piece of Rodico here and the flat end and what I want to do is turn that upside down here because all I want to do is have some fun well that's a different song The setting might just come out nicely there we go so you just push that setting out I need it to come all the way out not part way out so the actual I can leave might leave that setting in there because I don't need it to come out so so I can just push that back like that and there's the cap jewel and its setting is here so I just make sure that looks pretty dirty there's the cap jewel and that's in its setting. I'll put that back here in the uh, watch case here. And now I've got what I have here, folks, is, yeah, it looks like I've got a clean, the hole looks clear. You can see that. The hole looks pretty clear. So now I can take a, uh, a measurement tool that I'll bring up right in a second. So this is called a jewel gauge, cylindrical met jewel, metric jewel gauge Schwarzschild. And it's a bunch of gauges. So... I think this thing's probably 11 or a 12. So I'll start with a 12. And there's all the gauges and they're all noted here. Um, so I've got one of the gauges, only one of the gauges, I think maybe the 11, where I had broken off the end of it. Yeah, this one is good. So that's the 12. So all I do is take the jewel here and I see whether a 12 fits in there. actually fits quite well so it looks like it could be a 12 so that's a 0.12 so what I'll do is go to 0.13 and see if a 0.13 fits in there so and if it doesn't fit then it's a 0.12 you don't want it to be too tight so you just go like this again right I had to make sure I'm in camera here and just take your jewel gauge and poke it in the hole nope so a point one three does not fit in that that hole so it's a point one two one two so this is how you do that and here's the here are the gauges and I think I screwed one of them up I think the point one one is the one that I screwed up so yeah anyway that's it so so that's a 0.12 pivot. So now I know that the, and the upper and lower pivots are pretty much the same, right? I don't think there's any chance of those being two different pivots. So I throw that back in my watch box. You can see me in the box. That's American for box. And I'll take the old staff. I took a picture with this already, but I want to write down on this card, right, that it's pivot the pivot is 0 0.12 millimeters like that so now I've got almost everything and I'm just gonna look up this watch all right here you go there's the watch it's an it's an 845 just like I said there's a serial number the model the grade it's all there run quantity it's a gorgeous watch as you can see right and if I look down, uh, I could probably find the part for the balance staff if I wanted to go into the parts, what's its value, marketplace value, all that sorts of crap in here. So, But I'm not going to bother looking up the part because I think that the gentleman I go to will find the part. Well, there's parts. So if I look at balance staff, can I find balance staff? No part information available at this time. There you go. So there's the, go back to the movement spec, there it is. So that's enough, that's all you need to know. Right now, Jerry. 
and that's the data there's the watch and we're pretty much done thanks for watching this video thanks for subscribing to my channel and um, i'll be back probably in a week with uh, more work and another video i've got to go off on business so so we'll be back and thanks a lot and uh, thanks for all the folks that subscribe i hope you enjoy my work and what i do um, and don't forget to pick yourself up a very nice hamilton gmt watch so thanks a lot and i'll see you later